Hello and welcome to the deep dive. Hi there. This is where we uh, take a whole stack of sources, you know, articles, research papers, our notes, and really boil them down. Yeah, we try to pull out the most important uh, nuggets of knowledge for you. Think of it as your shortcut, sort of to getting up to speed on complex stuff, finding those surprising facts, the key insights, without you having to wade through all the material yourself. We're here to guide you through it, help you understand what's, well, what's really significant. And today, we are diving into something genuinely fascinating. It's a new development in the, um, the long fight against HIV. Right. Our deep dive today comes from a recent article looking at how mRNA technology, something we've all heard so much about, might be used in a totally new way. A way that could potentially um, offer a path towards an HIV cure. It's a really compelling idea, isn't it? Because it connects these huge scientific leaps we've just seen with well, with a really long-standing and incredibly difficult medical challenge. Absolutely. And just to set the scene a bit, HIV is still a major global health issue. Yeah, the source material mentions HIV.gov figures saying uh, nearly 40 million people around the world were living with HIV in 2023. Wow, that number, it really underscores why the search for, you know, new approaches and ultimately a cure is still so critical, even with all the amazing progress and treatments. Exactly, and that's our mission for this deep dive, to unpack this new research, get into the science, and understand mm -hmm. how mRNA, yes, that mRNA could possibly give us a, um, a completely novel way mm -hmm. to tackle the huge task of clearing HIV from the body. Okay, let's get into it. So mRNA for HIV. Now for most people, like you said, mRNA means the COVID-19 vaccines. How does that sort of connection help us here? That's a great starting point, actually, uh -huh. because most of us did learn about mRNA's potential through that whole global vaccination effort. Our source reminds us what mRNA is fundamentally. Right, right. It's a molecule in our cells, and its job is basically to communicate information. It takes instructions from our main genetic code, our genome, to uh, tell the cell how to make proteins. Yeah, think of it like a temporary uh, photocopy of a recipe from the cell's main cookbook, the DNA. This copy, the mRNA, tells the cell's machinery exactly how to build a specific protein. And proteins do pretty much everything in the body, so it's a natural, vital process. Utterly natural. And with the COVID vaccines, scientists basically uh, hijack this natural system, right? The source explains the mRNA they injected carried instructions, but not for a whole virus just for that specific spike protein on the outside. Exactly, and that was the key. Our cells made just that protein piece. Our immune system saw it, said, hey, this is foreign, and learned to recognize it. So it built defenses, antibodies, T cells specifically against that spike. So then, if the real COVID virus showed up later, the body was already primed, ready to fight it off. Right, so that was mRNA used for vaccination teaching the body defense. And now researchers are taking all that knowledge, that understanding of how to make and deliver mRNA and thinking, okay, how can we use this as a therapeutic? Not just prevention, but actually treating an existing condition. Exactly, a tool aimed in this specific research we're looking at at potentially clearing out those, um, those latent HIV infections. Okay, latent HIV. Mm -hmm. That brings us right to the core problem, the big challenge in curing HIV, doesn't it? Why is it so hard to just get rid of the virus completely. Yeah, it's really tough. Our source points out the main issue. About 1% of the HIV virus essentially goes dormant. It hides itself away um, inside the person's own immune cells. So it creates this hidden reservoir. Precisely. Now the standard treatments, the antiretroviral therapies or RT, they're fantastic. They stop the virus from replicating in the blood, get the viral load down to undetectable levels. People live long, healthy lives. It prevents transmission, huge success. Uh -huh. But those drugs, they can't get at the virus that's integrated itself into the host cell's DNA and just gone quiet gone dormant. It's like it's hiding underground. The regular patrols, the drugs, they can't find it, but it's still there. Exactly. And because it's still there, if someone stops taking their RT, that latent virus can wake up, reactivate, and the infection comes back. So that latent reservoir is the main barrier, the hurdle to a real cure that eliminates the virus. Which is exactly why this new research, uh, the stuff from Australia mentioned in the source, is generating so much buzz. They think they've found a way to potentially tackle this exact problem using mRNA. Okay, this is where it gets really interesting. What did they manage to do 
Well, the core finding is they found a way to essentially trick the dormant HIV into coming out of hiding. Trick it out of hiding, wow. Yeah, wake it up. And that, the source emphasizes, is the crucial first step. Because if you can make the dormant virus active again, make it show itself. Then the existing drugs, the ART, can actually see it and attack it. Exactly. Then those drugs that are already so good at fighting the active virus can finally get a handle on it. Okay, let's break down the mechanism then. How does this mRNA approach actually, you know, wake up the virus, <laughs> according to this research? Right, so the way they describe it working is pretty clever. They introduce an mRNA molecule into those immune cells where the virus is hiding. But this mRNA isn't carrying instructions for something like the spike protein for the immune system to see, like in the vaccine. This mRNA has a different job. A different set of instructions mm. to make what? It tells the cell to make a specific protein. And the source uses this interesting phrase. It encodes an unexpected viral protein. Unexpected. What's, a, what's the significance of that? Unexpected. Well. The phrasing suggests it's maybe a protein the virus itself makes or something that interacts with it, but one that the cell wouldn't normally be producing in that dormant state. The key thing seems to be that when the cell makes this particular protein following the mRNA's instructions, it acts like a trigger, a signal. A signal to the hidden virus. That's the idea. The source describes it as this protein basically poking at or waking up the dormant virus. It somehow jolts it out of latency. It disrupts its quiet state maybe makes it start trying to replicate again or produce its own proteins? Something like that seems to be the hypothesis. It makes the virus reveal itself. So the mRNA is like delivering the plans for a tiny little alarm clock protein, specifically designed to wake up HIV. That's a pretty good analogy, yeah. The mRNA delivers the message, the cell builds the alarm clock, and that protein rings the bell for the hidden virus. And then what? And then this is the crucial next part. The source highlights once that latent virus is awake, active, and visible. Then the standard HIV drugs, the RT that people are already taking, can finally do their job on it. Exactly. They can take hold and essentially rid that residual virus that's inside those people, to quote the source more directly. Wow. Okay. That makes a lot of sense. So it's not like the mRNA is the cure itself. No. And it doesn't replace the existing drugs. It's more like a specialized tool. Yeah. Precision tool. To flush the virus out of hiding so the powerful drugs we already have can finish the job. Clear out that last stubborn reservoir. That's a really important distinction. It's potentially an enabling technology, enabling the existing RT to achieve a complete cure, potentially. You know, thinking about how long scientists have been wrestling with that 1% hidden virus. Like 20 years, the source mentioned. Yeah. This approach feels really targeted, like aiming right for the weak spot. It does. So, okay, where is this research right now? Is this happening in people yet? Oh, no, definitely not yet. The source is quite clear. This is still very early days. It's been confined to the lab so far. Okay. They've shown the principle works, you know, in cells in a dish using mRNA to wake the virus up. That works in that controlled setting. Which is still a big step, right? From just having the idea to showing it works in a biological system, even a simple one. Absolutely. Proof of concept in the lab is critical. And the scientists, naturally, are hopeful about the next steps. Which would be? Moving into preclinical models. So testing it in animals first to see if it's safe and effective in a living organism before even thinking about human trials way down the road. Got it. So lab stage now, animal models next, then maybe eventually people. It puts the significance in perspective, though. Our source quotes Eric Wagner um, from the University of Rochester Medical Center. Right, and he makes a really important point. He notes that research specifically aiming for an HIV cure, not just treatment, has been going on for two decades. Yeah, 20 years. This isn't a new problem people just noticed. Exactly. And despite all that time, all that work, he specifically calls this new mRNA approach a breakthrough. That's a strong word breakthrough. It is. It suggests this really offers something new, you know, a, a different angle on that core problem of latency. And crucially, it uses a technology, mRNA, that we now know can be scaled up and deployed effectively thanks to the pandemic experience. That's a good point. And Wagner also highlights the potential impact, saying something like, uh, this is giving people options who have a disease that didn't have one before. Because while well, the current treatments are amazing, life-saving. Transformative, absolutely. The idea of an actual cure, one that completely clears the virus so you don't need lifelong medication, that's still the ultimate goal, isn't it? 
It is. And this research, even being so early, it outlines a plausible way we might finally get there by tackling that hidden reservoir head on. It really feels like um, like science building on itself, yeah, yeah. You know, taking a tool that was refined and proven for one massive health crisis. And seeing how it might be applied to another huge, long-standing one, it's quite elegant in a way. So let's just quickly recap our deep dive today. Yeah. We've looked at how mRNA technology, the stuff behind the COVID vaccines, is now being explored differently. Right, not just for prevention, but as a potential therapeutic, a treatment tool. Specifically, the idea is using an mRNA molecule to get immune cells to produce a particular protein. An unexpected viral protein. That acts like an alarm clock, basically. Right. Waking up the hidden dormant HIV that current drugs can't reach. And the key is, by waking it up, it becomes vulnerable. Vulnerable to the existing, highly effective HIV medications that people already take. Making it possible, maybe, for those drugs to finally clear out the virus completely. And yeah, while it's still very much lab-based research at this point. Early days. Very early days. It definitely represents a, uh, a genuinely promising new avenue in that long, difficult search for a true HIV cure. It really does. It kind of makes you think, doesn't it, about how interconnected science is. A technology pushed forward by one global crisis might unlock solutions for entirely different long-standing challenges like HIV. It definitely raises that broader question, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Like, what other tools or discoveries are out there right now, maybe in completely unrelated fields, uh -huh. that could be repurposed or maybe combined in some new way mm -hmm. to finally crack some of those other really tough medical mysteries we're still facing? That is definitely something interesting to think about. Food for thought. It is indeed. And on that thought, that's all the time we have for this Deep Dives. Thank you so much for joining us as we explored this potential breakthrough in HIV research. Yeah, we hope this dive gave you some useful insights into, well, the exciting ways science keeps finding to tackle big problems. Until next time.